Big Brother and the Holding Company were a pretty good band before Janis Joplin joined, but man, in 66, by the time she got there, they had a number one album, but of course she went on and became solo. Peter Albin is a good friend of our special guest, Peter Lewis of Moby Grape, who gave us songs like 805, It's a Beautiful Day Today, Omaha, and Mr. Blues. We talk about Big Brother and the Holding Company, the 60s and hippies, and a lot more on Rock History Music. Big Brother and the Holding Company formed in 1965. They're an American rock band renowned for their psychedelic sound and dynamic live performances. The band's classic lineup included Peter Albin on bass, Sam Andrew on guitar, James Gurley, also on guitar, and Dave Getz on drums. The group gained significant attention with the addition of Janis Joplin, whose powerful, soulful voice propelled them to stardom. Their breakthrough came in 1968 with the album Cheap Thrills, featuring hits like Peace of My Heart and Summertime. Joplin's electrifying presence and vocal prowess defined the band's sound, making them a seminal act in the San Francisco rock scene. Without you, uh, everyone trying to take uh, more than they give. I mean that that you know that that's happening a lot in the world these days. It's not like the Beatles. You you, you know the love well, you I th- give. I th- well, I think every every band from the sixties was trying to document what was going on around them in society, rather than make a statement about how we felt like as people at one point, you know, there was this great focus for people, you know, the social context in what in the sixties, it was like, uh, there was a, I was trying to, I was talking to Peter Alban today. He was the bass player for big brother, you know, and, and we had, they had just done this documentary on the sixties called the sounds of San Francisco. And we were both in there, and he was more in there than me because, of course, Janice became hugely successful. And Moby Grape was kind of like, um, they said, we all thought these guys were going to be stars, you know, <laughs> and that's it, you know. But they did give us enough to give us a, you know, we were all trying to be part of the subculture, but there wasn't a ton of hippies up there in the beginning. And yeah, you know, you're trying to describe what your life was like as this kind of a freak in society trying to change things and become individual like the beatniks were. Only now it was like the Beatles had shown up. So yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's see, they have longer hair than those guys. But it was hard to rent an apartment up there in those days if you had long hair because uh, I was talking to Peter and he was, I was the first time I saw a Big Brother they came to this club we had called the Ark, which we used to play at every night. And we also got very close to the Buffalo Springfield up there because they came to see Skip's new band because they had met him in the airplane when he was in L.A. playing with the Starship, surf with the airplane. And that Buffalo Springfield on the same bill. And they met Skip and they liked him. And he, had a, he, got a, he was out of the airplane. And I had his new band and they came up and wanted to see what his new band was like, because we had three guitars, and so did they, you know. So what are these? How dare they? <laughs> you know. And so they came and said, where are they? <laughs> said, the first time I saw this, they go, they're funny. We've had uh, Richie Fiore on this show multiple times, uh, talking about the good old days and Mama Cass and her parties. and. Uh, well, they, they were in L.A., the Buffalo yeah. Springfield, so they yeah. had all that L.A. action. And they, they were very popular kind of this new coolest thing for a while. And then it got together with the mamas and papas. Those people have been established. You know, I was talking to Peter and I was saying, the first time I remember seeing Big Brothers, they came to the Ark, the place we had to see us. And, uh, you know, there were these in capes and with crazy David gets his hair was like the first Afro I'd ever seen. So we were just basically... You know, we were working on our songs, but we were playing every night to get an audience. And, uh, you know, here comes uh, Big Brother. And they, and most of the people in there were not hippies. They were like, because there weren't that many hippies in those days. People forget that before the Monterey Pop, before the, the Summer of Love, it was like the minority. You were, if you had long hair, they didn't like you. You know, most people wouldn't rent you an apartment. 
and all of that. And I had and these guys, and a big brother walks in. I said, where did you, how did they ever rent an apartment? You know, how did they get to live together? Right? Where, where, where do they live, man? What's happening with them? You know, they were on the bill at, at, at Monterey with you guys in 67, right? Oh yeah. 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 Remember, comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos and like them as well. It makes a big difference. If you want to make a donation, we'd appreciate that. There's a PayPal link at the very top of the description. Join our Patreon, get early access to all our videos. And remember, we have a swag store where you can buy a t-shirt, a t-top, cap or coat or a lot more with either Rock History Music, Rock History Canada, if you're Canadian, or Rock History Book. There's a link in the description. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.